No, let me disconnect this from my R5 because I was using it on a gimbal recently with a video I was shooting for my gaming channel. And I just, I did a couple of test shots with the R5 and I was doing some while walking and vlogging with the in-body image stabilization. Then I turned the in-body image stabilization off and just used a gimbal for parts of that shoot. As nice as the in-body image stabilization is, the gimbal was just so smooth and easy to work with that I just kind of preferred that. But anyway, thanks for clicking on my video and welcome. So today we're going to talk about the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus and basically why I'm really not interested in picking it up at this point. If you're new to my channel, definitely consider subscribing as I talk about this type of stuff. But I also talk about, and this is, goes out especially to my viewers and anyone who's actually been here for a while because you guys know when i buy a camera when i talk about cameras or i talk about equipment i don't just recommend it to you guys i actually do numerous videos about it test the heck out of it use it all the time because none of the cameras that i talk about for the most part that i do tests with i don't already own now some of these cameras that I have talked about, like the various Sony cameras, I've talked about the R6 as I had it in my hand for a while and the R5. Have you ever noticed that, like for example, a bunch of YouTubers raved about A7S III or the R5 and then basically just kind of get you all hyped up and excited to buy it. And then after you buy it, they're done and they move on to the next camera and you don't get any love for the camera that you already bought and you're still figuring out how to use it and maybe one or two firmware updates they'll tell you hey a new firmware update came out this is what it does and then it just kind of abandons you and you have to figure out a lot of things on your own well in this channel i tend to consistently talk about cameras that i purchased for a long time whether that's the 5d mark 4 6d samsung nx1 and the r5 as well as a couple of other cameras that i have i still continuously talk about them and use them heck look I've got the Samsung NX1 camera that's pretty old still being used so I don't just talk about it and then dump it off to the side. I actually still use it, test the hell out of it and when I discover new tips or new, new little features that I like to talk about and I think that you guys would actually find value in knowing, I actually talk about that stuff as well. So if you purchased an R5 or you purchase some of these other cameras and you want to know more from a consistent basis, I tend to do that in this channel as well as talk about new cameras and stuff like that as well because I like that stuff. So, But today we're talking about something new. Today we're talking about the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. If you don't know what that is, it's actually a monitor, a field monitor actually, that gives you a bunch of different custom settings in order to view the content that you're recording because it gives you a bigger screen, it allows for better focus pulling, but the added benefit is that it has the ability to record in various different recording formats from your camera right onto the device into an SSD that you purchase separately and then attach to it, which gives you the ability, of course, not only backup recording if you need it, but working with better codecs. And in the case of the R5, it allows you to avoid overheating issues because basically you'll be able to record on the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus specifically up to 8K ProRes RAW out of the HDMI port of the R5 right into the Atomos and you can kiss goodbye those overheating issues. Now the total cost of the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus is around $1,500. Mixed with the price of the R5 at just around $4,000, $3,899, you're looking at about $5,500 just to get that whole package. And that's not even including the SSD or other things that you might need to be able to support all of that space. But what you do get with the combination of the two is the ability to actually record 8K ProRes RAW to be specific at a cheaper price than purchasing, let's say a Canon C70 and then recording with limited to 4K 120 frames per second. Though the dynamic range on the C70 
is incredible. There's still a lot of features that you'd get on the R5 that are pretty incredible. Now first, let's talk about why would I even consider it? Now I consider it basically to rid myself of any overheating issues that I might possibly run into on a professional shoot when recording with the higher capable video modes of the R5. When you're using the Atomos, you technically are not actually stressing the processor in the camera to record those modes because everything that's being recorded is recorded directly through the Atomos and Atomos is doing really the hard work whereas the R5 is only really displaying the resolution and sending that signal out to the recorder. So that makes it a little bit more simple. There's some calculations in the R5, but for the most part, it's carried out externally through the recorder. Now, the problem with that for me personally is recording with one of these is something that I choose because it's small, it's lightweight, it's pretty much run and gun. You can get in and out of situations easily and having to set up a field monitor on top of this camera to record off of that means more failure points because then you'll have another cable that's stretching out to your recorder and heaven forbid it gets caught up and then you might lose whatever you're working on. But also it's just not practical for me to carry in many of my different shoots unless it's something that's higher paid. And that brings up my next point. It's the type of shooting that I'm doing. 99% of my shoots when it comes to something that I'm doing for myself personally, I do record 8K most of the time on my R5. And I am not actually held back by the overheating limit because the overheating really doesn't happen to me when I'm actually out in the field recording for myself or even some clients as well. Because again, the file sizes are huge when it comes to recording 8K RAW or 8K ProRes RAW if you're using the external recorder. So you're going to pick your shots a lot more carefully and then more often than not, since those are going to be planned shots, you're not going to be looking to hit the record button and let it record for a long time. Not because overheating is an issue, but because storage space is an issue. However, I've actually gone on full day shoots, got the footage I needed, filled up my one terabyte CF Express card and never hit overheating, not even once. And that's another point that I wanted to bring up is when you're doing these longer shoots, and when I do these longer shoots, like much longer shoots, I'm recording to save space in a smaller format, such as a 4K format or even 1080, because in many cases, that's all I need for a specific type of shoot that I'm doing, even though I have the capability of shooting up to 8K. It's really not necessary, especially for longer shoots. Now, if it's a planned professional, all right, I want to get the most dynamic range and the most flexibility because this is a paid shoot. I can still do 8K RAW internally on the R5, which is something that you can't do on the Sony A1. So then what am I really missing off of the Atomos besides removing the overheating limits? It's really the capabilities of having a bigger monitor, having the ability to when you record, you're recording on these formats that are very easy to edit with when compared to what's internal on the R5, which tends to slow down a lot of computers. However, I have not had that problem with 8K RAW on my computer, thankfully. Not everyone can say that, but actually I have not had a problem with my RTX 3070 Ti computer with an AMD Ryzen 9 3900X processor and 64 gigabytes of RAM. So I've kind of beefed up this computer, which leads me to the point of like not having an issue with editing. So I've set myself up from different angles and from different perspectives to be able to edit with no problem. But when you want that easier experience and not everybody has that, you can get around that editing problem with the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus. So all in all, do I need to upgrade? Maybe not. Not at least not at this point. If I have an upcoming job where I really want to record long periods of time, I've got several SSDs and I need that 8K raw, then fine. But I don't see that happening anytime soon. And perhaps when that does happen and I do need it, prices might come down for this recorder, which is what I'd wait for. Now, let me know what you guys think if you would actually purchase it or thinking about purchasing it, especially for the added feature of removing the, the overheating limits. For example, you won't have to worry about 4K HQ overheating on you as well. And that 4K HQ would be super nice to remove that overheating limit as well. Again, I have not run into that issue and I know many who have not run into that issue, 
But if you do, that's one way to remove it. But I did, I did recently watch a video on Adam. I was kind of talking about this uh, new field monitor with the added recording capabilities of AK RAW for the R5. And uh, I left a comment on there and I said, hey, I don't know if this is for me. I got to think about it. And they responded back and say, hey, contact us and let us know. And, you know, we can, if you want to know more about it, we can, we can have a dialogue. If I'm lucky and I set things up, maybe I can do a test and maybe my I might be swayed to say, hey, we need this recorder. But as of right now, the only way I think about getting a new camera accessories is if I feel I'm missing out on something. And unfortunately, I don't think I'm missing out on much with the R5 because I have the ability to record 8K RAW internally, which is something that most hybrid cameras, in fact, no hybrid cameras outside of Canon let you do that. Record RAW internally without actually saying, okay, you need to record externally. I like the ability to record internally. Oh, and, and, and one final note that actually might have me hesitate and wait on this, and this is, I just, I just thought of it too, is the fact that since the R5 is capable of outputting 8K RAW through HDMI, what if Blackmagic comes out with their own version? And I tend to enjoy working with Blackmagic RAW versus ProRes RAW. And I hear great things about ProRes RAW, not taking anything away from it, but it would be an excellent choice to have so that a lot of file types are the same when I'm using my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera in line with this Canon camera and all the file types are the same and it's a breeze to edit with. That's that's kind of something that I actually might gear towards and Blackmagic does innovate a lot at very good prices So I'd be curious to see if they come out with anything too. So that's another reason why I'd hold off a little bit I mean, I could be wrong. Maybe Blackmagic won't do anything with Canon, but maybe they will So here's hoping fingers crossed, but let me know what you guys think Is the Atomos Ninja 5 plus something that you're interested in and I will definitely do a follow-up video if I do get my hands on the Atomos Ninja 5 Plus and let you guys know what I think. As always, that's all I got to say on this subject today. Now, what do you guys think about the upcoming announcement of the R3? We already know some of the specs on it, although the megapixels has been kept secret, though we all know it's going to be 24 megapixels. What do you think? Is it an exciting camera? Are you looking forward to it? I kind of am and I am not. I don't plan on testing it. I don't plan on reviewing it, but maybe I will. Occasionally, I just can't help myself and I ask Canon, hey, send it over to me. I want to see what it's about. As of right now, it's not an interesting camera for my personal taste. But again, that's just my opinion because I'm a video guy. From a photography perspective, it's going to be insane. <laughs> but as always, you can make my day if you subscribe today. Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later. Click, click, click. Bye.